Governor Mike Pence wants lawmakers to end the debate over same-sex marriage this year. In his State of the State address this week, the governor asked for a civil conversation. Let's have a debate worthy of our people with civility and respect. Let's protect the rights of Hoosier employers to hire who they want and provide them with the benefits that they deserve. And then let's resolve this issue this year once and for all. Josh and Lynn reports from the State House where concerns over the legal and economic impacts of the proposed constitutional amendment are dominating the debate. When Bloomington resident Ellen Epstein contemplated the idea of marrying her partner, her first reaction was no. Because I think it's very heteronormative and I don't like how women are viewed. I don't even like the word wife and husband for the meaning that that carries. But her partner wanted to put Epstein on her health insurance plan, which required the two to be married. So again, the first reaction was pissing me off, making me angry that, you know, I feel kind of being told how I have to be in, this, in my relationship. And then I said, okay, let's do it. It was about that fast. In December 2013, the pair headed to Vermont, where they had a friend ready to officiate the ceremony, and where same-sex marriage was legalized in 2009. They call each other their spouse, but here in Indiana, state law doesn't recognize their marriage. That law went into the books in 2004, but now the stakes are even higher because of House Joint Resolution 3, a proposed constitutional amendment, which reads, Only a marriage between one man and one woman shall be valid or recognized as a marriage in Indiana. A legal status identical or substantially similar to that of marriage for unmarried individuals shall not be valid or recognized. Voters will decide on HGR 3 in November if it makes it through this legislative session. While the bill passed with ease through the Indiana legislature in 2011 as part of the amendment process, the second round is less certain. On one side are the supporters. A group of them traveled to the State House this week to join the crowd at the first committee hearing for HGR 3. They cast the need for the amendment as a democratic and moral issue. It's a passionate issue. There's a lot, there's a couple passionate issues, but this is defining families. This is defining our way of life. This is defining what children, the atmosphere children are going to grow up in. This is probably the biggest issue ever because this is going against biblical truth. On the other side of the ring are the opponents, led by a relatively new group called Freedom Indiana. They've been active in recruiting corporations and universities. It jeopardizes our ability to be competitive in global markets and to attract and retain top talent to our company. Opponents are also focusing on the second sentence of the proposed amendment. A legal status identical or substantially similar to that of marriage for unmarried individuals shall not be valid or recognized. They say it's too vague and could threaten same-sex benefits that companies and universities currently offer, or even domestic violence protections. Here's where the debate gets muddled. Republicans introduced a new bill, House Bill 1153, as a companion bill to HDR 3, intended to clarify the legislative intent of the amendment. Representative Eric Turner says that opponents' concerns about the second sentence are unwarranted. The marriage amendment does not take away or in any way change Eli Lilly's or Indiana University's or any other employer, public or private, the ability to provide health care benefits to their employees and whoever they want to allow employees to include on the health plan. Both sides have produced arguments on the constitutionality of HGR 3 based on that second sentence. Testimony at Monday's hearing went for more than four hours, longer than the time allotted. Chairman Greg Stewarwall decided to end the hearing without voting on the bill, saying he wanted to give legislators enough time to weigh the testimony, at least until next week. I believe uh, that marriage is between a man and a woman, um, but with this particular piece of legislation, uh, I've had uh, concerns over the second sentence, as others have as well, and um, I'm continuing to digest the information that I received yesterday to try to um, pay attention to, to how that would affect us. Seven Meanwhile, the fight outside the state house rages on. Let me vote. 
Let me vote. Conservative group Advance America bought TV ads urging voters to encourage their legislators to vote yes. Protections like sharing health insurance. Freedom Indiana volunteers are taking a grassroots approach, working the phone banks, urging voters to do the opposite. Ellen Epstein's partner, Jane Rogan, says that's what's different about this year's fight. There are plenty of people who know gay people who realize that this amendment will hurt their friends. And I think that's the strongest message you can send. If it's just simply people like me and Ellen saying, no, this is bad for me and Ellen, then it's not going to get much traction. You know, and it's those people, I think, over time who are going to be the ones that, that change people's minds.